Yo, what up gamers? Welcome to my Samira guide. Today I'm going to show you how I play Samira as a Master Tier ADC main. If you enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe to keep up with future guides and the best educational ADC content on YouTube. Alright, so we're getting into lane here, and I'm just going to hold on to my skull point for now. I would want to use Q here if I just want to trade with enemy bot lane, but since I've got Rel, who is a pretty good support with uh, Samira, and can easily level 1 engage, potentially Rel could do an early engage, and E would be better there, but... Okay, yeah, so we didn't get the chance to use the E instead, so yeah, did em eventually end up leveling the Q. You don't want to wait too long, if especially if the enemy starts actively trading with you. You want to be able to trade back. However, maybe gonna get a kill on Zeri here anyway? Ah, oh, crap. Okay, I can at least probably still get Lulu, and I even live, let's go. Yeah, so as a whole, definitely did a lot better starting the queue there than I would have with E. But, you know, it, it can be really good, especially if you're, like, level 1 cheesing. Like, from the brush, if you don't have to leash. It can be very, very good to start the E and start on Samira, because it just gives you more damage, since it's, uh, I guess, about the same damage straight up, but you get a lot more attack speed, you get the gap closer into melee range. To use your passive, it makes it harder for them to get away from you, etc. But anyway, uh... I'm just gonna pick up this rated dirt here, I guess, uh, because we just have the perfect amount of gold for it. It's gonna be way better than just grabbing double longsword and the uh, dagger or something. Um, so this rated dirk is something you can do like whenever you want, really. It's gonna build into collector later on, and by rushing this over like the components of shield bow, we're basically getting a stronger early game uh, at the expense of delaying our mythic. Which is obviously not great, so in order for this to be worth it, we need to be able to snowball. Since I'm already at a double kill at 3 minutes... Well, okay, I only have one kill technically, but you know, we killed them both at like 2 minutes, level 1 or 2, whatever that was. Hopefully we're going to be able to keep that, that pace up and just snowball really hard, and this Red of Dirk should help me do that. Um, or maximize my chances of doing that. And Samira's a champion who very much is snowball reliant, so... Okay, I'm going to switch targets onto Lulu here. Uh, okay, she misclicked that polymorph. Try and go into Zuri here, using the E for some gap closing and some attack speed, get into melee range as well. Oh, and we just barely kill her, nice. That was, so, so you see, that was such a close kill, I only got that because I went for Serrated Dirk, which is the strongest prospect that I could possibly gotten at that moment. So, I can't remember at the moment if that would have um, made a difference for the Lulu kill. At the very least, I got the kill faster because of the Serrated Dirk, and I definitely only got the Zuri kill thanks to the Serrated Dirk. So at the moment, I'm gonna say that it's heavily paying off. It's definitely looking that way. Also able to get this little playing there. Nice of Rel not to tax that. So I guess what we'll do here is we'll just pick up the Vamp Scepter. And get the refillable. Probably gonna have to sell that pretty soon though, since I'm sitting on a Serrated Dirk. That uh, I'll eventually... It's taking up a slot that'll, that will take a while for me to fill up, so... Yeah, eventually it'll probably lead to me having to sell my refillable for boots or something. Still, it can help me a lot for now. Potentially. I would say since I have the vamps up to those, it's pretty optional. If you don't want to go for the refillable at this point, it wouldn't be the worst thing. Okay, so we just want to thin this wave out before we really try and look for another engage. We don't want to throw our lead by being too cocky. We probably can win a fight even against a bigger wave than them, but, you know, why take that risk? My, my Vamp Scepter alone is already just giving me healthy from the poke that I took. Alright, so Roll heads and engage. We're going to go into Lulu here since the one furthest out of position. Just using that W early to block the Polymorph. Or, potential, or potentially block it. And I'm just able to clean up Zeri pretty easily. I guess she did not have e. Yeah, I mean, so... We're doing pretty well for us right now. This is actually not really too uncommon for um, a Samira roll. Like, and honestly, this is just an absolutely brutal duo. Just have an insane early game. So you can see we just easily kill whoever Rel manages to hit or engage on. I think Rel might be the best support. Like, the absolute best support for Samira. She's definitely up there. It's definitely a lane I really hate to face. 
Yes, yeah, so we cancel the refillable here. Alright, I'm out of range, so I won't bother. I was thinking of selling it for boots. Oh well. But it's not gonna get me uh help me get into lane faster though if I'm gonna be uh walking back into the fountain to get it, that's just gonna delay me, so there's no point in doing it. But anyway, yeah, whenever we engage on Lulu, we want to try and as we dash onto her, we wanna give her time to like try and use her polymorph. Uh but then also like use W in time that if she were to use it early, it would be blocked. But not using W so early that uh, at the same time she has time to realize that that it's going to get blocked. And, you know, just hold it. So she's she has been holding it every time pretty much. But when we're diving into melee range of her, it's just not really something we can react to. So we just have to use it um, preemptively every time. It was, it's only if we're going on Zeri, for example, and Lulu's like an auto attack distance away. That's when you can actually see the polymorph and then react to it with W and just cancel it. So far we keep going on Lulu. Oh, yeah, again, going on Lulu. <laughs> this time I don't even have to use my W, because it's just so free. Oh, okay, yeah, probably not going to get Zeri there. Yeah, so, uh, as you can see, we have a really brutal early game. I mentioned that. It's worth repeating. We have a very, very strong early game, but at the same time, we don't scale the best compared to them. Uh, Samira has a pretty big dip in the mid game. Um, and then sort of becomes decent again late game, but I'm pretty sure Val is just like a... Hang on, see if we can get a, another kill here. Yeah, that's going to be easy. Nice one. Yeah. Um, but Val, on the other hand, is like super good early game, but then just falls off a cliff. Alright, hang on. Maybe another kill here. She's already wasted Polymorph. Okay, I missed IQ. That was really bad. Okay, I'm not getting tower aggro here, so I can just wait out the shield. Shit, I didn't wait out the shield. <laughs> Alright, nice one. Um, can I skip the Lee here? Okay, that was easy. Um, okay, this is gonna be hard to play, but I can maybe kill him if I stay out of the turret range. Okay, he really messed that up. Ah, okay, but I missed as well, so... Um... That should just be able to easily collapse on me here. Yeah, there's not much to do here. <clears throat> Zed doesn't seem like he noticed, but eventually he surely would have noticed and just turned on me. So I, I was gonna... Ch it was a long shot, but I was gonna try and 1v1 this area there. Probably my best chance of actually making something happen there if she somehow messed up. Um. Okay, I really should have bought Crick Cloak there, but... At this point, I don't want to turn back for that. Okay, we got we're all trying to engage, but I got a really big wave here. Um Yeah, okay. I don't really want to fight here. We should just definitely disengage against the Zerialt. Don't let her keep getting stacks. You gotta even stay away from the mini wave. Because uh, otherwise the bounce can get you. Alright, this should be an easy kill. Yeah, poor Zeri. Lulu go way too close there. Okay, that's just easy. Yeah, so uh, this probably goes without saying if you know anything about Samira, but you want to try and space out your abilities as much as possible with your auto attack, so you can get as many ranks as possible while you're diving into these people, so you can get your ultimate. You don't want to just like, you know, press E, W, Q, and then auto attack. You want to at least auto attack first, then uh, preferably auto attack between as many abilities as possible, if it's possible. You know, if, if you need to use W to like block a polymorph or something, then go ahead. I'm just gonna get this turret before anything else. Um. Okay, I think Lulu's trolling here. Either that or AFK. Probably trolling. And this th this is the unfortunate part about playing something like Samir. <laughs> okay, I'll just let her attack to the ignite. It's too funny not to. Yeah, this is the unfortunate thing about trying to make videos with something like Samir is you snowball really hard. Like this is not just because I'm like, like massively higher ranked than the enemies. I don't think. This just typically happens when you're stomping them really hard, and you know, that's just what Samira does. She stomps really, really hard. 
So it's really frequent that when I try and make videos with Samira and I get off to a good start, the enemies just start trolling. Doesn't happen on other champions so much. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna be able to pick up my shield bow easily here. I can actually pick up Collector as well. This is a massive base here. Next up, gonna go um, for, yeah, gonna go for the Tobbies. We could also go for the Berserkers, in theory, but they're generally they're just not as good as Tobbies on Samira. I was considering it just because I'm really fed, but I'm gonna try and teach you guys, you know, the proper build. Not just what I'd build because I'm fed. But yeah, generally you want to go Tobbies or even sometimes Merc Dreads on Samira uh, rather than Berserkers. Because you don't auto-attack too much compared to other DCs. Like a lot of a lot of your team fighting is just your ultimate. And to do to do an effective ultimate, obviously, you need to be pretty deep into the enemy team to actually hit them all. And you need to survive long enough for your ultimate to actually kill them, right? So the survivability from the Tobbies is really good. Because you need to you need to be able to survive just the minimum amount of time. Without sacrificing too much damage, so that's why you can only really build Shield Bow. You have no other choice than Samira. It's your only possible mythic. Should maybe go top here. And uh, also why Tabbies are generally favored over Berserkers. Although if you are snowballing, you can go top, you can go Berserkers, sorry. Or maybe even Ionians as well. Let's see if it walks up here. Oh, okay. Yeah, Ionians are also a perfectly good choice as well if you're snowballing. Honestly, maybe even better than Berserkers. I don't know. I just know attack speed feels nice. But she is very reliant on her abilities, and you can also just, like, if you... If th there are a lot of situations where you can't, like, use all of your abilities to stack up your rank, right? You basically can only rely on auto-attacking Q, auto-attacking Q, auto-attacking Q. You just keep repeating that until you're max rank, you know? You get that a lot faster if you have CDR, right? Ooh. Okay, we're all heading at the back, so I, I guess they couldn't see her. Maybe better them into a bad fight here? Alright. So if we can maybe get Lee here. Right, nice. I'm really close to killing him. Oh crap. Oh well. At least it helps us clear the whip. We don't have to let him back here. Hopefully we'll be another turret as well, depends if anybody comes to defend. But at that nah, there we see everybody on the map. This should just be another free turret. Really nice the Rel has pretty much all game just been giving me every single solo plating as well, by the way. Like Enchanters, I get it if you're running Spot Thieves or the AD thing. You know, it makes perfect sense for the support to want to hit the turret with you. But in terms of like damage to, to the turret, their contribution isn't that great. So if, they, if, if they're not getting gold from the support item, I would rather they just don't hit the turret at all just so I can get the solo platings if possible. Just more gold for the ADC is always better. Anyway, we also want to get this Gromp here because there's nothing stopping us and that's just going to deny a lot of gold and XP from the enemy jungler. This is how you really want to snowball your lead. Uh, when you're massively ahead, there's pretty much just nothing stopping you from walking to the enemy jungle and taking their resources. It's the, it's the closest you can get to like killing your own minions to deny farm from the enemies. Obviously in League, unlike Dota, you can't deny uh, minions to the enemies. You can't kill your own minions to deny it from them. But, you know, you can kill camps, which is... Pretty close to being the same thing. Except, in this case, it also actually gives you gold. So it's not only denying gold from the enemies, but also putting gold in your pocket. So it's super valuable. Anyway, at this point, we've taken every turret on the map. Well, every outer turret on the map, except for the mid lane turret. So that's where we're going to go next. As for why we went to top lane in the first place, rather than mid lane. It's just a lot easier to take the turret against the Darius than a Zed, for example. Zed is more... Uh, threat from range than Darius does. And on top lane, you're also more isolated, so there's less chance of the enemy jungler coming to help. Especially when platings are up, that's very valuable to just go top lane instead of mid lane, if you can get platings more easily there. Mm. Okay, I got a good trade there. I'm just obscenely ahead at this point that even in a basically 1v2 trade, I still won that really easily. Ooh, very good engage from Brawl. Yeah, not much point in this ultimate, but in case she just barely survived, would have executed her before she could polymorph me, and we also get some wave clear. Remember, Samira ult doesn't have any cooldown whatsoever. Actually, well, I can't remember right now if it's 5 seconds or if it's uh, no cooldown, 
But it's it's effectively the same thing. You pretty much every time you get an S rank, you're going to be able to ult again. So there's pretty much no downside to using ult except for the amount of cost. But at the moment, that's not a concern for me. Okay, not going to be able to get Darius there. We could get the wolves, but I just want a base here. Since I've already got Infinity Edge anyway, I'd rather not delay my gold. Okay, I did get my base cancelled anyway. Um, yeah, this Gromp is up. I'm just going to take Gromp. Poppy can get the wolves as well. Perfect. So I could also, again, go for the top wave. But it's going to be more valuable to just deny the blue. I think Poppy would probably get it anyway. If I didn't get it. But if we base here, then she's going to be alone. And maybe leaking just steal it from her. So I'm just going to focus on getting the blue before anything else. And honestly, the <laughs> this wave is such a disaster. If I don't uh, farm it, then nobody's going to get to farm it. Because it's just pushing towards the enemies. Um, they're pretty much all also bot side, so I might as well just continue pushing here. It's a shame because I really do want to base here. It's actually really bad, usually, to be, uh, sitting on, like, 2,000 gold and not spending it. But you know what's also really bad? It's just completely ignoring somebody's split pushing, which is what the enemies are doing. So I kind of, like, I'm, they're forcing my hand here. It's worse for them to leave me here than it is for me to not base. Yeah, so I still see no signs of an enemy. I'm just going to keep pushing. I don't think anybody's coming. Maybe Zeri? Nope. It's just free. Can even go for this next wave? Nah, actually. I won't bother. Now we can base. Because either way, I'm not going to be able to get that Nexus turret. I'm barely even going to be able to damage it. It would be greedy to try. Just going to back off early. Get my gold spent. <clears throat> okay, so now our options are going to be either Lord Dominix or Bloodthirster, really. Those are the two main options that most people would go for. Um, so they don't have too much armor right now, but you can see the Lee starting to build even more, probably going for a um, Death Stance, and Darius also has a component that can build into Dead Man's Plate, so they're going to be getting a lot of armor soon. Hang on. Oh, wow, he just dies really, really fast. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, as you can see, like, I'm, I, I do so much damage right now, and one more armor component than all of them is not going to change much. So in this kind of scenario, I would just usually... I would advise you just to build the Bloodthirster, because you're going to have so much more survivability. Drastically reduces the chances of the enemies being able to shut you down, and your damage is going to be more than acceptable either way. So the further ahead you are, I would say the more viable it is to just build defensively. Some people think it's the other way around. They think that if you're behind, you should build defensively. So you can, like, stop giving away even bigger of a lead. But that's just not how that works. If you deal zero damage, you're going to be useless. And you're already useless as it is when you're behind. You don't want to make it even more so. Okay. Um, I envisioned that going somewhat differently, but hang on. Maybe we can still salvage this. <laughs> okay. All right, nice. <coughs> Yeah, I was, just, I was hoping to get an AOE ultimate there, but they all really backed off as soon as I flashed in. Oh my god, this guy just st doesn't stop getting CC'd. Oh man. Didn't get to kill the Zeta wall. Yeah, so when you want to pair Samira with other supports, you know, it's good to look out for her well, but any kind of engaged support should be fine, like Nautilus, Alistar, just anything that can engage. Anything that makes good use of your passive and just gives you an opening to just dash in and melt everybody. That's what you want as Samira. Ooh, I should have finished off the Lulu. Oh, I just barely don't get Zed. Okay, nice. I wouldn't have been uh, inside there until the fountain, even if he aimed there, right? Come on. Nice. There we go. <laughs> Alright, let's just put them out of their misery. I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Later, gamers.